Yes, look at that. That's perfect. I did it. I did it. Hey, Tom, I did it. I did it. I'm Abigailia. I'm a stand-up comedian. I grew up in Ohio, and I now live in London. So we're going to do some, like, old-school Midwestern cooking from, like, the 90s and the 80s. So we are making my two of my favorite things my mom made as a kid. Um, marinated slank steak. Look at that. Look at that. Pretty good. All fits on one car. And Napa cabbage salad uh, with a dressing. It's all very delicious. It's a really good summer meal right now what I'm making. What I did was I bought a kilo of flank steak, which is 2.2 pounds, and I just cut it in half because I'm not gonna make four pounds of steak. I just live with my boyfriend. That is an obscene amount of steak. So this is half of it right here. And um, the other half I already pre-marinated because you know in cooking shows where they're like, just marinate it and then they pull out a new one. A, like, flank steak is the part of the cow that's like the chest. It's also called bivet. Uh, and if you buy bivet instead of flank steak, it costs more because it's French. I find it's been really difficult for me to find flank steak here in the UK. You guys don't seem to eat it as much. I talked to a butcher about it, which is um, where I bought the bevet, and he was just like, yeah, that's not it really a thing here. So if you can't find flank steak, you could use hanger steak or you could use skirt steak. You'll still get pretty much the same effect. So this is our steak. So you will need a pound and a half to two pounds of flank steak some uh, salad cooking oil, and mine's a little off color because I've used the same measuring cup over and over again. You need um, three-fourths of a cup of soy sauce, which is right here, and uh, a fourth cup of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, Worcestershire, that's how you say it, Worcestershire sauce. Um, some dry mustard, some salt, some pepper, and some red, some wine vinegar, white wine vinegar, which I have right here. Um, Three-fourths cup of, what is this, lemon juice, which is roughly about half, two lemons worth of squeezing. And you need some parsley, and you need some garlic. So the first thing we're going to do is make the marinade for the steak. Just soup simple. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna cut up our parsley and the recipe suggests that you use about two tablespoons of parsley you can use dried parsley i'm just using fresh parsley because i bought some the other day and now i am, have more parsley than i need whenever i need an herb garden that's what i need because whenever you cook you need like that much of a fresh herb and you go to the store and they sell it by that much so then what you do is you get to put some herbs in your fridge and watch them rot, which is super fun so just chop it up, unless you're using dried, and then throw it in whatever you're gonna marinate your steak in. So I'm just gonna use a plastic bag to put mine in. You could just do it in a like broiler pan if you want, or, a, or really whatever works for you. So we do that, and then it calls for two cloves of minced garlic. I'm going to use three because I just got this like little baby garlic and it's so sweet and it needs friends. So they're all going in together. So I'm just going to mince those ever so quickly. This steak is one of my favorite things my mom made all the time as a kid. It was one of those like once a week we have chicken and then on the days we had steak this is the steak we'd have. We'd have this flank steak. And it goes really well with like baked potatoes and broccoli. Like that's how I grew up eating it. It's just like a baked potato and some steamed broccoli. And, uh, but I'm doing it with the salad today because the salad's just fun and we deserve nice things. So there we go. That's our garlic. So we're gonna put that in. Ooh. Nigella makes it look so easy. So we need to add our oil. I use rapeseed oil, you can use vegetable oil, canola oil. Uh, you just wanna use an oil that can cook at a high heat and is relatively like tasteless. So you wouldn't wanna use like sesame oil or anything like that, cause that's a little too strong. You could use 
olive oil maybe, but I wouldn't suggest it. So you put your uh, cup and a half, cup to cup and a half of oil in your marinade bag. And then you're going to add the three fourths a cup of soy sauce, just like that. And then add your Worcestershire, 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 you can, your uh, English sauce, uh, Worcestershire, Worcestershire. Leave a link in the comments if you can phonetically tell me how to say Worcestershire sauce. And then you take a half cup of white wine vinegar, throw that in there. You've got your lemon juice, one third of a cup. Again, it's about two lemons. The thing is, is this is just a marinade. So, I mean, measuring is a, important, but it's not the end of the world if you don't get everything perfect in a marinade. This isn't like baking, it's not science. So. Don't freak out if you're like, I only have one lemon. Just put freaking one lemon in. Then we are going to put in our dried mustard, and that is two tablespoons. And again, you don't have to like level them off or anything like that. Oh dear. I never thought I'd say this, but I might be out of mustard soon. Two teaspoons of salt, it says, and then two teaspoons of ground pepper, which I don't have already crushed pepper, so I'm just gonna use my grinder. And then finally, the thing we're going to marinate, the steak itself. So what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna take a, just a fork and you'll wanna stab your steak and get all the, you know, anger out that you need to on your steak. Oop, I've set off my induction hob. Right. Okay. U.S. selection! You know, you just let it all out. And then once you've got that, take your steak, or put it in your marinade, seal it up, and then oh, make sure the air is out of it, or as much air as you can get out of it. I just mix it up in the bag. When I put stuff in the refrigerator to marinate, even if it's in a bag, I always put it in a bowl because one time I had a bag leak on me and I had buttermilk all over my fridge. My mom always left it on the counter all day long. And then when she sent me the actual recipe, it said marinated in the refrigerator and I asked her about that. And she was like, I suppose it's better for hygiene, but I always just mar marinated it on the counter and none of you died. So. Uh, food hygiene was always very important in my childhood. But we'll put this one in the oven, or oven. What am I talking about? We'll put this in the fridge. Let that sit for two hours minimum. You'll wanna marinate that. The longer you marinate something, the more the sauce will soak into the meat, the more it'll break it down and the tastier it'll be. So I would suggest doing your marinade in the morning, putting it in the fridge, and when you come home at night to make dinner, that's, it's already done. So that's it, that's the first part of our steak. And now, what we have to work on is our salad. So this is Napa cabbage. In Britain, you call it Chinese cabbage. And I've now lived in the UK for six years, and what has been a joy as someone who likes to cook is walking around confused in your grocery stores because you call everything something different. Um, corn starch is corn flour here. I walked around a store for an hour trying to find corn starch. What a day that was. So um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna just take your Napa cabbage and you're just gonna cut it real fine. And this, like I feel like in all cooking shows I watch, at some point the chef looks at the camera and is like, my kids don't like vegetables, but these vegetables they love. I don't have children, don't plan on having them, they scratch it, and um, so I have no idea. My only endorsement for will kids eat it is when my brother was a kid, this was, <coughs> excuse me, it's not COVID. Um, is when my brother was a kid, he would, he loved this stuff so much that he would sit at the table and it, you know, when he was a kid, the table came to like here on him and just eat it with his fingers to eat it as fast as possible. Because at that point in his life, uh, 
forks eluded him. So this salad, by the way, it's just salad, green onions. Uh, we're gonna make a dressing and it's got these crispy noodle stuff on top. We'll make it very fun. It involves butter, you'll love it. Uh, so before that, you take one half of cabbage. In the original recipe, it says use five green onions. I use three green onions because my mom used three green onions and that's how it works, right? You just kind of copy what your mom did. So same thing, just chop them real fine. Chop them all the way up to the green part. In, in my opinion, that is the best part of the green onion. I like green onions. They're very satisfying to chop and they're the only onion that don't make me cry. They're the happiest of onions, really. So this also, like, it travels really well. You'll just want to keep, like, if you're taking this to someone's house, keep everything separate. So when we make the crispy noodles, let them cool completely. Put them in a plastic container or a glass one if you're super woke like that. Um, keep your lettuce um, in a different container and obviously keep your dressing in a different container and like 15 minutes before you serve it, whack it all together and stir it up. So that's it. That's our vegetables right there. It's just green onion and uh, Napa cabbage or Chinese cabbage. And now we are going to make our wonderful dressing. In my opinion, the best way to make dressing is to put it in a jar and shake it up. Whenever you see a recipe in a recipe book and they're like, only takes 30 minutes to make. I call bullshit on that because no one who's designing recipes has to continuously clean out their own measuring cup. This adds two minutes of cooking time to anything. Our salad dressing is going to be a half a cup of oil. I'm using a light olive oil for this one. I was going to use rapeseed oil again, but I ran out. So it's not that big of a deal if you know, you mix and match stuff. If everything's a little, you know, if you're a little under in your measurements, if you're a little over, this isn't a, a meal that is like do or die. Half a cup of oil, boom. And a half a cup of cider vinegar. Half a cup of cider vinegar with half a cup of oil. Two teaspoons of soy sauce. My tisp. Check it out, I got these new things to hold my sugar in uh, and my flour, and they're huge, but um, they make me happy, so there you go. Half a cup of sugar goes into your ball jar to mix it up, you just get to shake it, and it's very satisfying. So like, shake, 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 And it can take anywhere between, I would say, one to two Lizzo songs. We're making, oh shit, I forgot to turn on my oven. The problem with induction hobs is they don't work when you have like grease and stuff. So you always have to clean them off. Plus side, my kitchen's never been cleaner since I moved to this flat. Downside, I have to fucking clean my kitchen all the time. Our crispy noodles are made with a cup of cake, two packages of ramen noodles, it says a half a cup of sesame seeds. I just buy one like jar of sesame seeds and that's how many sesame seeds I use. And then it says a half a pack of shaved or sliver almonds. A half a pack, uh, that's incredibly vague. I would say use about a fourth of a cup. And it also calls for a half stick of butter. One British block of butter is worth two sticks of American butter. So what you need is a fourth of a British block of butter. First of all, I have to crush up our ramen noodles. What I suggest you do is just this. Uh, I broke it. This might not have been the best way to do this. So first, throw your butter into your thing, and I know, hey, Amaglia, a half stick of butter, a quarter stick of British butter, that's a lot of butter. I know it is. Why do you think the salad is delicious? When you're making this, you want to get your butter melted, and then as you're putting this in, you have to do it in stages. So you're going to want to put in your ramen noodles first, let them cook for a bit, then add your slivered almonds, 
then add your sesame seeds. If you put in your sesame seeds at the same time you put in your noodles, your sesame seeds will burn before your noodles brown and you will be so fat. I feel like maybe this is too much butter. Has anyone ever eaten anything and gone, oh, I wish that had less butter? Never happened. And go ahead and put in your crispy noodles. So some of them are kind of big chunks. I really like the big chunks. That's like my favorite part. So I highly recommend that you keep them that way. And this salad, you could do it with anything. You could do it on its own. You could just fry some chicken or make some chicken cutlets and you know, you could serve it over the salad if you want. You could serve it on a side. It's just, so I don't know if you can see from my lovely top down, but our noodles are starting to brown a bit. And once they start to brown, that is when I suggest you put in the almond flakes. And like I said, I'd say about a fourth of a cup, which I think is that much. So maybe a handful of almonds and just drop those in there. And let the almonds and the crispy noodles just kind of meet each other and be like, hey, oh my God, do you go here? I go here. <laughs> and let it all kind of brown up together. And as you can see, like, yeah, okay, I think I did do enough oil because as it browns, the oil gets soaked up into the noodles and then there's, there's less of it so they won't be greasy. Oh shit, I'm burning it. Uh, I then, if you start to burn your food and it's in a uh, frying pan like this, the frying pan will stay hot. Just take it off the hob and keep stirring it around and you can see it's still cooking. It's just, though, you can also just reduce the temperature of your hob, but sometimes I don't do that. Anyways, okay, cool. Oh, this is going so well. My point is recipes, right? I grew up with my mom, my aunts, my uncles, like everyone in the neighborhood, all the adults always passed around recipes. And then I moved to New York and then I moved to London. In New York, more than London, less of a cooking town. No one there is like making huge things because no one there has in a kitchen <laughs> bigger than like, this. So like that's been my kitchen for 10 years and now I have a big kitchen or to me what is a big kitchen so that's why I was like I'm gonna have a cooking show now because I have a, a kitchen that's big enough Ooh. okay yeah I did I did put just a tad bit of butter just follow the actual recipe and don't eyeball it maybe the first time or do eyeball it the first time because who cares again it's butter no one's complaining Good and brown to all varying degrees. So we'll just take that off the hob right there. So if you can see, ugh, how do I do this? Like that. If you, again, are taking this somewhere else, you put that in a plastic bag, but wait for it to cool completely before you like decant it somewhere else. Because if you seal that in anything when it's still warm, they're ramen noodles. They, all they have to do is think of moisture and they cook. So make sure they're completely dry, otherwise they'll get all squidgy. And we're not going for squidgy, we're going for crispy, crispy is the deal. So we have our salad, pretty much done. So from here, it's just about combining it, right? So you take your, oh, this is too much butter. You, awkwardly pour out some of your butter while losing your sesame seeds and oh my god that is too much butter i did this with too much butter the last time i did it i didn't do it with too much butter we learn as we cook people it's never perfect so after that you throw all of your crispies in the salad and then you're going to take your dressing and let it meet everything else. Let me grab it to stir it all up with. Again, just shake it off, you know? Find yourself a good song, maybe a little Taylor Swift, just to make dressing. You always need a good dressing song. I think pop music's really the best for it, but really whatever you want. So mix all your dressing up. And then we are going to pour it. Oh, no one! Oh, uh, learning is fun. So next time, let it cool completely. 
I wonder if they're going to get squidgy. I don't think they will. I don't know if that's supposed to happen. Get rid of that. And then just mix it all up together. And you're going to want to let it sit for about 15 minutes or so. While we are waiting for that to happen, we are going to take our already marinated steak and put it in the oven. So this is the one I already marinated. So the, your leftover marinade, you can just throw it away. Uh, sorry. I just moved to this house like a month and a half ago. I still don't know how it works completely. Stop talking to me. So we've got to put the salad over here. And then we're going to take our marinade, this marinated steak. Oh my God, look at that. It is amazing. Look at that. Compared to what it looked like before I put it in, I realize we all know this is a different steak, but just the color and stuff, it's already, it already looks cooked. So you just put it in the grill for real quick. If you have a grill, it's really good to grill on an actual grill. Um, if, or right now, I'm just going to put it in the oven. And you do it for like two minutes on each side. And this is also one of those moments in your first ever cooking show when you realize I'm not wearing a watch and my only timer is on my phone that I'm filming on. So we'll see how this goes. Um, so did I say two minutes each side? This one's quite thick. I would do four minutes each side. That's how I do it. So we're gonna just pop that in to the grill on the highest rack and just leave that in here. Whenever my mom broiled stuff, she always left the oven open a bit. Does everyone do that or is that just a my mom thing? Cause I thought you, when you grill, you have to leave the oven open. I'm not quite sure. Anyways, four minutes, flip it, another four to three minutes on the other side, depending how done you want your steak. And on that note, I'm going to run upstairs real quick and find a watch. I'm back, I have a watch. Okay, we're gonna turn it when it says 24. So, yeah, so this is pretty much it. This is how to make this meal. Again, it's just real simple, just the salad. That's all hanging out together. I I feel good. I feel good. I did it tangy. Okay. This is like all the vinegar in it. I Makes mean, it really tangy, but then all that sugar in it. It gives it a little sweet. And then with the croutons covered in butter, they're just like, oh my god, forget about it. It's so good. You'll absolutely love it. You don't have to make these things together. You can always make them separately. You do you, it's your food, you know? But if you do make it, please uh, comment below. How did it turn out for you? Do you like the food? Um, if you know someone who's into cooking, by all means, please share this YouTube video with them because this is my first one. The next one will be bean soup. Very excited about that because I had to buy a ham hock and uh, that took some doing. But um, but yeah, now we're just kind of waiting for our beef to cook. Steak is such a steak is such a simple thing to cook, but it's it's one of those things where you just got to get it quite right, right? Or people are obsessed with getting it right. Like sell the sizzle. You hear that? Mm, we are selling that sizzle. But. Um, I don't know, I get really obsessed with getting my, my steak like correct um, to, and I never get it right. You know, I want a medium rare steak at all times and I never quite nail it. But even though I don't always nail it, at the end of every time I attempt to make a medium rare steak, I always have steak. And that's really the most important part. Where are we on time? We give it one more minute. Should we give it one more minute? Yeah, we'll give it one more day. And while I'm waiting for that, I'm just gonna slowly put stuff. I can't get it off.
That's never happened before. Three more minutes on the stake. Holy Jesus. Holy Jesus. That was not funny. My ears are still ringing. We're just going to pretend that didn't happen. How long have we been recording for? 30 minutes. So this whole thing from top to bottom has probably taken me 45 minutes, but you have to consider I measured out half of my ingredients beforehand. So I think I really hurt myself there. Hold on. I need you to see what? That's our steak right there. I think it feels right. It's hard to tell. I'm gonna take it out now just cause that was really traumatic. And you always want your steak to like rest for 10 minutes. So just put it on a plate, let it hang out. Again, it just had a very traumatic time. It was the first time this steak got to go in the oven and it created a freaking, uh, electric techno party or something oh boy i'm so traumatized by that i did not see that coming i thought of everything before i did this and i forgot about that even though i don't always nail it at the end of every time i attempt to make a medium rare steak i always have steak and that's really the most important part so yeah so just let it sit here and have a think about life and I'll show you guys when I do cut it, but what you want to do is you want to cut away from the grain or against the grain. So don't cut it long ways, cut it against the grain into strips and serve it that way. So there we go. We have our Napa cabbage salad and our beautiful flank steak. And we're just gonna let this rest and then we'll put it on a plate and I'll serve it to Tom and I for dinner whom I think is really tired of me cooking already. All right, thank you so much. Again, if you liked this video, like and subscribe it. If you know someone who might wanna make a meal like this, please share it around. I've been Abigailia, you have been a treat. Thank you so much and enjoy your dinner. Bye.